يعني؟ اوه السلام عليكم حياكم الله جميعا معكم احمد الشغيثري من الصندوق الصناعي I'd like to just give a bit of a brief about the Saudi Industrial Development Fund I'm here with obviously our resident expert Mr. Shaib Qadi when he comes he'll give a bit of an introduction about his experience but for me I've been with this idea for the last six years and uh, right now I'm a team leader for uh, the pharmaceutical and medical devices sectors. Um, SIDF is uh, a government organization, a government fund that funds industrial projects here in the kingdom. Uh, we also provide advisory services to uh, our clients and uh, other companies. Um, uh, so I think today we'll just give a bit of a brief about the pharmaceutical sector. Uh, obviously we can't cover everything today, but we'll try to kind of make it a bit more interactive. Uh, we brought some samples here and uh, we'll try to leave some room for questions uh, later on. Um, so the agenda today is basically we're going to discuss uh, some basic information about the pharmaceutical sector. We'll go into a bit about regulations and what differentiates this uh, sector in terms of manufacturing. Uh, we'll go into the details about the facilities and uh, manufacturing and then we'll give a bit uh, brief outlook about the pharmaceutical industry here in, uh, in Saudi. Um, so basically, drugs, uh, the word drugs is derived from uh, the French word. Uh, it means uh, dry herb. Uh, they're also called medicines and uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, traditionally, they would be obtained from natural sources. Uh, recently, they are byproducts of processes such as uh, chemical, organic synthesis, molecular modification, and, and uh, biotechnology. Um, so when we discuss uh, a drug, what do we, what's its components? One is the API and the excipients. API stands for the active pharmaceutical ingredient, and it's the component that produces the required effect and that the body, uh, that's used to treat the body. The excipients are the inactive substances that are used uh, to serve as the vehicle or medium for a drug or other active uh, substances. So basic terms, the API gets the job done, the excipients carries the goods. Um, uh, obviously everybody knows uh, Panadol, its API is uh, paracetamol. Uh, there's this uh, other drug, so for the insulin or for the amoxicillin. It's the, it's the uh, API for uh, Clevox. Um, I think I'll leave it to my colleague from here. Uh, Shaib, if you can give a bit, a brief introduction about yourself and your experience. Yeah. Okay, so it's good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Yeah, so my mic is working, right? Yeah, okay, so good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Shoaib Kazi. Um, like I told some of you people, I have been working before most of you or all of you were born, yeah, except that gentleman out there. Yeah, so uh, so 37 years in the industry, uh, and in the pharmaceutical industry, four years in Abu Dhabi, and 22 years in Saudi Arabia. So I was the CEO of uh, three companies in Saudi Arabia. So I started uh, three companies out here, uh, right from the beginning. So if any one of you are interested in starting a pharmaceutical factory, come to us. We will help you not only with the money, but with the expertise also. Yeah. So basically it's like this. So I'll just uh, add to what uh, Ahmed has been saying here. So everyone is aware of Panadol, right? So we have the picture of a blue Panadol out here. Yeah, so you have the red Panadol, you have the green Panadol, and you have different kinds of Panadol. So what differs here in the green and the red and the blue is the API. So here you have in the blue, you have only paracetamol, yes? And then in the others, you have uh, the red one, you have the paracetamol and the caffeine, yes? And then you have in the green one, you have pseudoephedrine, etc. So that is the API. Yeah, so that is the API, the, the, the one which makes, uh, which cures you or makes you feel good or whatever you can say. Yeah, and I'll just go one slide back to, yeah, so the excipients, they carry the goods. Like for example, when you, you know, everyone has taken a vaccine. Yeah, so everyone is taking, so it's a liquid based, it's, it's water based. So that water is an excipient. Sometimes, so as we go along, we will go into the details of what uh, the different things are. So the excipients is basically, it could be the water, it could be something like magnesium stearate out here, and uh, different, different things. So it can uh, be the flavor, sometimes you have orange flavor, right? So that is an excipient. Sometimes you have a different color. So, so the red color or the blue colors, you've got tablets in front of you, right? So everyone can see there are different colors here. So, so these are basically the ones which are colored are uh, the excipients. 
Yeah, so people at the back, if you come in the front, so you will be able to see the tablets as we interact when we later on. So, but it's, uh, it's totally up to you, right? Okay, so we have gone through this. Now, amoxicillin and clavonic acid. So, it's, it's a combination drug here. So, what is happening is you have uh, insulin, you have paracetamol, and this is a combination. It's a combination of two APIs. So, earlier, initially, a few years back, Saudi Arabia was not allowing combination drugs. Uh, but let's say since the last 10 years, uh, they have started uh, allowing combination drugs. So combination drugs were uh, introduced, uh, it came in a bit later and so on and so forth, so in Saudi Arabia. So here we have more details about the, uh, the excipients. So excipients can be preservative because when you have this, uh, the sharab, what do you call, um, uh, the oral liquids, the, the oral liquids. When you have the oral liquids, what happens is basically you need to preserve them because they are water-based, uh, etc. So anything which is, so th that's where you put the sweetening agencies, you know, the flavoring agents, sweetening agents, em empty capsule, empty. So you have the capsules in front of you, yeah? So these capsules are basically, are just uh, a vehicle. It's just uh, basically encapsulation or just a container. So these are basically also in terms of excipients, but these are a different class of excipients. So you have the binder, the lubricant. So, okay, so as we go along, we will go inside and then we will have, uh, we will go further in. Okay, so what is uh, generic and patented? So, um, okay, so I've got some samples here. I will come around, so it's okay. I will be out of that streaming thing. But I've got some samples here. So I'll be just coming around. So I start uh, with the ladies first out here. Yeah, so we have, uh, we have the samples here. So you have the patented and you have the generic, right? So I if you see here, so you have the patented and the generic. So this is, uh, may, this is the originator, the one who has originated. This is the patent, patented generic. This is basically the second brand thing, yeah? So this is what we have. So again, coming back to you people. So you have the patented, which is the originator, and the generic, which is basically a copycat product. So patented generic, yes? So again, okay, so you're a bit late. So we, we you, so again, patented generic. Patented is the originator, and this is the generic. So a copycat is a generic product, yeah? So same thing out here for everyone, patented and generic patent is the originator, this is the copycat. Yeah, so you have the brand, which is everyone knows Panadol, then you have the second brand, which is Favadol made in, so, and then this is Paracetamol is a basically generic. So you can have a brand, you can have a uh, patented, and you can have a patented generic too. Uh, sorry, a, a branded generic too. So this is what it is, I go back to the screen. And uh, so what is the difference basically? So. Uh, you have the medical preparation which is protected by the trademark. Everyone knows uh, atrovastatin or a statin, so, th so that could be a patented one. The generic is an equivalent copycat drug. So it is equal, in it's an identical uh, to the branded drugs, safety, etc., etc. What are the things? The same API is used between a patented and generic. The same action, everything is the same. Same GMP and quality standards. <coughs> This is basically especially true in Saudi Arabia because I think what uh, Ahmed will come to later on that Saudi Arabia is a regulated market. When you say it's a regulated market, it is a market wherein uh, it's like uh, it has the highest standards. It has got one of the highest standards in the whole industry. Oh, sorry, in the whole uh, world. Globally, it is uh, known as a regulated market. So it is on par with the uh, US FDA, with the EU, and uh, let's say Japanese and health, et cetera. So, and that is the reason. And why do you do that? Or why do we do that? To protect you. So the SFDA is protecting the consumer, okay? Now, when this is there, when a patented, it is starting from research. So you start from the research, basic drug, et cetera, and then uh, go forward. Here, the research is basically just how to develop. Copy it, develop it in the similar manner, how to make the same copycat drug and do. And then it goes to, uh, it needs to prove that it is working, it is safe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, it just needs to show, a generic needs to show that it is the same. For example, the effectiveness, you take the medicine now, this is the patent, original, so it goes into the peak, let's say in one and a half hour, and then it goes down, let's say in the, in the next four hours or six hours or 12 hours, 36 hours, depending. So. The generic here, they will plot the graph and it has to go the same way. So when you, uh, when you say bioequivalence, what do they do in bioequivalence? So we have most of the centers are in India or Jordan, so bioequivalence centers. So the bioequivalence centers, uh, what they do is they have a lot of pa uh, 
patients, let's say depending on the product, it could be 36, it could be 50, it could be 80, depending on the uh, product. Let's say for example, if it is statins, then the products could be 36 or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then those drugs will be tried, the generic drug will be tried on, uh, let's say 36, uh, and the patented will be tried on the 36, and, and then they will plot the same, whether how fast it is absorbed in the blood, whether it is affecting in the same manner, etc., etc., etc. Now you have anti-cancer drugs also. Uh, when you want to do anti-cancer bioequivalence, you don't get that kind of patients in the anti-cancer. Yes, because there, you know, you need to find out the cancer patients. They should be willing to try out these drugs also. So the bioequivalence, the number of patients go down. So it depends on what kind of uh, uh, drug it is, what category of drugs, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, and then we will come to the details of this, how this gets done, Th that will be a bit later, yeah. So, okay, these samples, so now we come to a part where I think you will play more of a part than us. So you have got something on your table, yeah. So if you could just have a look at the ones which are on the table. So, uh, okay, so we have, uh, can you tell that just let's, let's randomly. So if those people at the back can come, it will be nice. Otherwise, we can just still uh, keep it that way. Can you tell me what is this, the white one in the table? Uh, more specifically, please, and a bit louder, please. No, not the, okay. So we are talking about, okay, sorry. So my mistake, so we are not talking about Panadol, so we are talking about the dosage form. So here, we have displayed something to you which will show you the dosage forms. A dosage forms is, like it can be you know different different kinds of the you can be a pill which you take it can be a, like you know the injections etc so what is this sorry yeah yeah so basically this is a tablet yeah so this is a tablet which is very common so it's maybe my miscommunication that you so it's a tablet and the line in the middle is to break it so just in case someone because this is a 500 mg so suppose uh, uh, it's a 16 year old or 18 year old, they may say, okay, 250 mg, so you break it and you take half, yeah? So it's a tablet. And you have different kinds of tablets. Can you uh, pick up other tablets and show it to me, please? Ladies. Yeah, so you have these tablets, you have the small tablets, so you have various sizes and colors of tablets, right? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a capsule. Okay, yeah, so this is the one tablet, yeah? So you have the oblong tablet, the shape is oblong, yes, you have the smallest of the pill, the smallest, you call it a pill, this is the small one, yeah, this is the small tablet out here, right, the See, yeah, uh, yeah, the orange one, it's a very, very small one, right, and then you have the blue and white tablet, yeah, so the whole thing can be made in the same, uh, in the same machine, yeah, so this is a double layer tablet, single layer tablet, oblong, and this is a pill which is basically a uh, small, small, small pins. So this will be like, you know, you can in the same machine, if this is 200 per hour, this will be 100, uh, this is 200,000 per hour, this will be 100,000 per hour, you know, because it is long, uh, it's, it's a different shape, yeah. So you, this is the, you have tablets of different types. And then you have the, on the things, you have the capsules, yeah, you have the capsules. These capsules are hard gelatin capsules. So if you see here, yeah, so if you can, the yellow one is a capsule, it's a hard gelatin capsule, yes? So it's like this. So do you want to break it and put it on your uh, table? Would you like to break it and put it on your table? Yeah, so can you, can you put it on the table? Yeah, just break it open. Can you open it? Guys, yeah, try, try opening it, yes? Yeah, so uh, yeah, can you help, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so can you open it? The yellow one, pull it, pull it, pull it. Ibrahim, I think you need to help them. Even I am not able to break it. <laughs> it's a bit hard. It's a bit hard, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So, anyone, any one of the caps. Can I use my mouth? Yeah, you can say, but don't do that. Okay, very good. So, the black, I've opened, I've managed to open the black one. <laughs> put put the table. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did it. 
Okay. So, if you can just touch it safe, it's safe because that the yellow ones are curcum. What do you say? Uh, the, the herb? Yeah. So, it's, it's, it's. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So, this is what you use in the, you know, you use in the house. You use in the, the cooking and etc. But it has got antibiotic properties. So, that's why. Yeah. So, <coughs> you may would like to touch it. Touch it and see. It is. It's curcum. Yeah, yeah, it's curcum, yes. Yeah. So if you just touch it, it is like a powder. Is it more refined than the ones that you have at home or they have to touch it? Yeah, it's more pure, you can say. It's more pure. It's not mixed with any preservatives or something, yeah. So <coughs> Okay, so now we have the other tablet which is this color. So uh, yeah, so guys, <coughs> you have this two multicolored tablet which is green and red green and yellow water. Try and opening it and keep it away from the curcum, yes? We keep it away from what? The curcum. Don't mix it. No, no, it's okay. It's, no, no, it's nothing can happen. But basically, yeah. So I'm taking more time. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, small pen. Yeah, so everyone has opened that? Correct? Yeah, you open it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what's the dif what's the difference in in the feeling when you feel it? What is exactly? <coughs> so, what what? So, Haifa, you need to say what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, it is a pellet. It is small pellets, small granules, you can say, right? Yeah. So, what happens? You know, so uh, many of us take, anti, you know, during the examination, we get high acidity, etc. You are taking anti acid pills, right? Yeah, many of us take, I used to take it because I used to get hyper and study. Yeah, so, <coughs> so the capsules, anti acid capsules, need to dissolve in the intestine, not in the stomach. So, these pellets, so these capsules, the, the, these pellets which you see, the small granules, are coated. They are coated with. Uh, a uh, chemical which will uh, not uh, dissolve inside the acidic condition of the stomach, but will dissolve, dissolve in the intestine which is more uh, basic, you know, the alkaline conditions. So, this is what. Sometimes you get uh, uh, tablets which or capsules which say sustain release capsules. Sustain release that you know you take it now and it will not immediately release. So, normal tablets release immediately and they go peak like this and they go down. Sustain release work for maybe 12 hours, 15 hours, 24 hours. Yeah, so that is entry coated. So you coat it so that they release separate. So this is what. So the capsules come in uh, the powder pellets. Okay, then you have the uh, this color. Yeah, so you have the orange with the red band. Yes, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Try baking it. Uh, there is a liquid inside. Yes, there's a liquid inside. Very good. Is yeah. It okay if, uh, we if you break it, it'll be like I'll you like you're a muscle man. <laughs> <laughs> No, it yeah. <laughs> no, that is uh, oil. Oh. Yeah. So basically, Can you poke it? exactly. That's why I kept this. You know, you can't break it normally. So that's why you have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you have the uh, yeah. So you have the la la the pins. Yeah. So yeah. Anything? No, no, no. Go ahead. We still have time. Yeah. So you have the pins there. Yeah. Everyone has pins there. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So just <coughs> poke it. So now this is basically something which you know if you go 10 years back you wouldn't be able to do this. So you wouldn't be able to have uh, liquids in hard gelatin capsules. Yeah. So you wouldn't be having. So some of the let's say vitamins and all those things they are not stable in the solid form. So they are stable in the liquid form. So they. So this is a hard gelatin capsules. So the ones which you broke earlier were all hard gelatin capsules. So even this is a hard gelatin capsule. So this is liquid in hard gelatin capsules. Okay? Okay, great. Now you have the green pill. The green one? Yeah, you have, you have the green pill, right? Everyone, the small green pill, round pill. Yes. Okay? Okay. Now, can someone tell me the difference between the ones which you have been breaking till date and the round pill and this pill? Yeah, I think you did your homework and came, yeah? <laughs> Yes, yeah. So this is basically right. This, uh, so these two are known as uh, soft gelatin capsules. So they are made in a totally different manner. 
So, whereas this particular capsule, you know, it comes in two, two parts. So, these capsules are in two parts, they come like this. You fill up the one, this, and then you cap it up. So, this is how it is made. Whereas, this and these particular, uh, where is the other one? Yeah, this one. So, these are basically made into gel and then they are like, you know, in strips and then you put this thing in the So, can you break the green one if you can? That's why we kept the, this one. Yeah, the green one. Again, so you can't tear it out, you need to break it up. Break it up and smell it. I am, uh, how much? Yeah, it's okay, yeah? No, 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 with the pin, pin. Yeah, break it, I mean, poke it with the pin, the green one and smell it. Exactly. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. So, it's mint. Yeah. <coughs> what is it, Haifa? It's a mint. Yeah. It's a mint. It's basically, it's, yeah, so it's a mint which is used basically for digestion or whatever, whatever. So, you can use it for anything, but it's a very strong uh, extract of mint. So, what happens with uh, like mint or is earlier vitamin D or so many the vitamins, you are not able to put it in the solid form. So, you need these kind of capsules. This was the ones which is still very, very heavily used. Now, uh, with the latest development, these capsules are coming. Hard gelatin capsules filled with liquid, but it is, um, what can I say, it is uh, expensive to fill. So, this is still uh, relatively cheaper to fill. So, that is what we were trying to do. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, yeah, we have got patches there, right, if I am not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, you have got the patches there? Uh, yeah, those patches, yeah. So, okay, so how many of you know Michael Jackson? All of you know Michael Jackson? Yeah, okay. So, very sadly, how did he die? Overdose of what? Drugs, okay. So, what? Any particular drug? Painkiller. Huh? Exactly. So, what was that painkiller? So, Michael Jackson died with the uh, overdose of, like she rightly said, a painkiller, which is an opioid, which is an addictive painkiller known as fentanyl. Yeah, fentanyl. Now, fentanyl is one of the highest form of painkiller. It is normally given for the cancer patients. So, you know, his doctor was hand in glove and he started prescribing painkillers. So, he started with, let's say, paracetamol, then he went to ibuprofen, then slowly, slowly, he reached the peak of the painkiller thing. Now, fentanyl comes is normally is basically fentanyl is given to, like I told you, for the cancer patients and it comes in patches. It comes in patches, yeah. So fentanyl. So what happens is that you know this is uh, this is the medicine which is uh, attached. Here. So it depends on the volume of the fentanyl or whatever. So the patches can be small. Some of the patches can be this big also. Just very small patches, yeah. It can be. So this is what. So these are the patches which you use mostly for pain uh, as painkillers. So okay, you have a localized back problem. You just put this patch, and it is just acting there. Yeah, it can be fentanyl. In this case, it is uh, uh, diclofenac. Diclofenac is a very common painkiller which is used by everyone almost. It is used as a tablet or it's used as a capsule. It can, but this is particularly uh, when you say you use it as a uh, for the back or this. It's a very common patch. So most commonly used is back or shoulders or something for these patches. So nicotine patches. Yeah. So these are the patches. So what we are talking here about is. Uh, patch, we talked about capsules, we talked about tablets and you know we have uh, uh, the wires. We have, so, these are known as dosage forms. We have, we, we call them dosage forms. So, there are different tablet there are dosage forms etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, we have here I think most of you people have at one time or the other seen uh, the, the inhalers. Yeah. So, inhalers. So, these are known as metered inhalers. These are known as metered inhalers. So, these inhalers are basically used for the kids and everyone, I think because of the sand here, people are using the inhalers out here. So, you have another kind of inhaler out here. So, here, so what happens in this, this is known as a DPI. Yeah, dry powder inhaler. So, this is known as a DPI, dry powder inhaler. So, what happens, there are certain things which cannot be in the liquid form or, or aerosol form, they may not be stable. 
So what you do is they they pack it up in a in a capsule. They pack it in up in a uh, capsule. You open the capsule. You put this inside. You close it and you do. You press this and yeah. So there are two like um, sharp pins inside which breaks it so, and then you suck it so these because this is necessitated because it is uh, not stable so this is another so inhaler is one dosage form um, uh, tablet is another dosage form a liquid which you do is another dosage form and so on and so forth yeah so is this now we were talking about api and xapns and also api what api comes it doesn't come you know it comes in drums it comes in normally as a thumb rule in 50 kg drum. So this could be a, an example of an API. So it is, it is a powder. So this is what the API looks like. This is what another API would look like. And so it depends. It depends. It could be a fluffy powder. It can be a compact powder. It can be in the term in uh, granules and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, what we will do is we will continue from here. Yeah, and because we we are running short of time, and if there's more time, we will uh, go further. I think I need to continue, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So because we are running short of time, so I think that was uh, okay. So now we have the pharma classifying uh, classification. So we have the small molecule drugs, we have the large molecule drugs, we have the large biologics. I'll have to go fast because we have taken much time on that particular thing. So aspirin, like you know, so those small pills which you had on your table was aspirin. So aspirin is like a bike in terms of uh, complexity, and then you have the high molecule weight is let's say atrovastatin, etc. Would would be like the car, and then you have the cancer drugs. Yeah, those are the balance. So vaccine which you took all for the COVID-19 is basically equivalent. It's a very complex drug. Yeah. So then we have the small molecules which is again Lipitor, atrovastatin, and this. So again, it's like equivalent to water. Okay, so when you are talking about these pills which we showed you, these are all uh, chemical drugs. So chemical drugs are equal, identical, everything is same. Yeah, you can produce one chemical to another. It's the same. It has the same properties. But when you are doing biologics, no two biologics can be same. Like, you know, brother, sister, sister, sisters are different, right? So the same thing happens from the same manufacturer. Different batches, the biologics differ. It is not that okay. One is one that this no. It, there's a small difference, but because it is uh, derived from a living organism, it will always differ. So this is uh, the small molecules are basically again. So what happens? They are small molecules, like I told you, chemical process, living cultures, uh, low molecular weight, high molecular weight, well-defined structure, complex, very complex. So that's why it cannot be replicated. It is basically similar. That's why we call it similar. So we have the biologics and the biosimilar. That's why. Okay, so I'll take you will take it from here, and then I'll come back to you again. Sorry about, yeah. Uh, so I think my colleague uh, Shaib he mentioned about the regulations. Alhamdulillah, in Saudi we are uh, what's called a regulated market. We're uh, on par with uh, the SFDA, uh, the Canadian uh, regulators in Europe, Japan, uh, and their job basically is to protect us. Their job is not to uh, to. Uh, to make it easier on the manufacturer, but to protect us. Fa this is one of the things, alhamdulillah, that uh, <coughs> that we should be proud that uh, Saudi, Af uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is on this uh, for. So they have uh, basically three jobs, oh sorry, five jobs that they are uh, uh, doing. One is protecting the public, they are ensuring our safety. They are setting the standards and specifications for uh, the imported and the locally manufactured uh, drugs. Uh, they are overseeing the consumer awareness on all matters related to food, drugs, and medical devices. Um, they regulate uh, the local imported uh, exported pharmaceuticals in terms of licensing for production, pricing, distribution, advertising, withdrawal of local and international suppliers. And uh, lastly, they maintain a list of registered and newly uh, uh, registered pharmaceutical products. Um, so uh, what does it take to get a, a drug approved? So uh, if it's a new drug, uh, obviously they have to go through the preclinical -cl pre stages and the clinical stages. The dr drug development, discovery, toxicology, then they go into phase one uh, trials, phase two, phase three uh, trials, and then they go into market. So what's important here is to move from the toxicology to phase one, uh, you have to uh, evaluate the safety. So they, the safety is important in the beginning and in phase one uh, trials. Then after that, when they move into phase uh, two trials, they have more patients to assess the drug's effectiveness. And then they further also evaluate the safety. The phase four, uh, sorry, the phase three uh, trials, it's a larger number of patients and they assess the drug's effectiveness, safety, side effects, compare this drug to the current uh, treatment. 
Uh, lastly is the phase four market. Obviously, when it goes out to market, they might have, uh, let's say, uh, issues. Uh, some people might uh, unfortunately die. Then they have to recall back the, uh, the drug and, and, and try to see what, uh, what the issue is. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll move to facilities and manufacturing, which is uh, my colleague's expertise. Obviously, 30 years experience in it, so I'm sure he can take it. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ahmed. So we need to be quick because you've got just 20 minutes left and so it's oh, so sorry. Okay, so we will be quick. So basically, these are the factors which you consider in the facility management. We won't go into the process very deeply, but this is a flow chart for a tablet uh, manufacturing line. So, <coughs> so this is the tablet press and this is the packaging. We have, uh, if we have time and if everyone is still keen, we can have the videos running so we will show you what exactly. So the difference between, this is known as oral dosage. So oral dosage is something which you take from the mouth. So the difference between tablet and capsules come here, everything almost remains the same. Yeah, uh, this is gone, but you know it's too much of a detail. Yes, and this is something which is very interesting. So I will come to that later in case uh, uh, this uh, we have the time. Okay, so what happens in design? So let me go back again. So what happens in design when you are designing a pharmaceutical factory? I do not know about the others, but in most of the uh, factories, so what you do is you do inside out. Yeah, so first you need to know. Okay, you want to make a tablet or a capsule, or you want to make an injection, or you want to make a <coughs> for example, so you know like, okay, so I will just give you an example here. So we have the small uh, drops and we have this, you know, the many of them, many of you people have used uh, the eye drops, right? So these are eye drops here, yeah, these are the small eye drops. So these are known as small volume parentals because they are small volume parentals. This is large, so large volume parentals, yeah, so it is basically common sense, yeah. So we need to we need to decide whether I want to make this, I want to make this, I want to make what exactly, exactly, and based on that decision, you will buy the equipment. Okay, you will still not buy the equipment. You will uh, uh, narrow down on the equipment, and then you have the technology. So there are different technology, even in tablets, even in capsules, in uh, the injections, different technology. So that technology comes in, then you finalize the equipment, you select the equipment and then you come to the clean room. So what happens in a clean room? So I'll just, uh, what is a clean room? A clean room is, this is a room which is basically not, I would say dirty, but this is, it has lots of bacteria, a lot of dust, etc. because of the carpet, because of our clothes, etc. So when you do a clean room, this is a clean room. So it is basically, it has got steel walls, it has got very epoxy coated, you see here, this is, you know, there's no dust settling out here, there's no dust settling out here, you will have, <coughs> the air which is filtered in such a manner that you know it is there is no bacteria coming in through the air conditioning system so you are all engineers so this would be interesting for you yeah so you have and then you have these lights which are basically from the top so you so no one goes inside a clean room to maintain it everyone goes from the top to maintain it so it's known as a clean the why clean room because so so you do a clean room then anything which touches the substance. So when you are eating a tablet, you want, don't want people touching it. You don't want dirty uh, water inside it. So, so the clean, that's known as the pure media. So the water, the air, everything is pure. So that is why we call it the pure media. Yeah, and then so that has to be taken care of in a very systematic manner. So, uh, and then you have the steam, the chilling, uh, etc. This is pure. And then you ultimately design. So you go inside out and you design a building. Okay, so this is a photo of a clean room. So how a clean room looks. So basically, this is you know it's very very clean, HEPA filtered air, uh, very nice. Okay, even the uh, the windows they are flush. It's not like you have a ledge out here so that the dust can settle, etc. And then you have like we said the this thing. So the water which you take in, which we put into the uh, which we put into the product depends, it has to be pure, it has to be filtered, it has to have no bacteria, etc. In case of injection, we have multi still this, it is distilled multiple times and then it goes into your injection. So, you are absolutely safe. Uh, this is an example of the, you know, the flooring is basically coped so that no, uh, it can be easily be easily cleaned and then uh, no dust settles out there, etc. The in a pharmaceutical fact or in for that matter anywhere, the major contamination is coming from the people. When you move, uh, you know, so when you move, I think, I don't remember exactly, but I think four steps, you are generating 50,000 particles. So, yeah, so there's a lot of particle generation when you move because from your dust, from this, so you're moving. So, 
they wear these kind of clothes in a pharmaceutical factory. So this is basically a cloth. So you cover your feet, you cover this, and all these are non-dust generating uh, cloth. There's a special cloth basically which you use. Yeah, and then we have the classification which we don't have time. I think we are short of time here. So you have the classification of different, different. So you have class A, class B, class C depending on. So when you are making uh, injections, so the surrounding area, the machine is always under class A. Yeah, and then the surrounding area is class B. If you are making tablets, the class D. So A is the highest class, B is the next highest class, C, D. This is non-classified, so this is totally, this would never do. You know, the FDA will come and close on your factory if you're making in such areas, yeah. So basically, so this is, so sorry I'm going a bit fast, so because we have lots of other things to cover. Okay, one of the major issues in a pharmaceutical factory, or for that matter in any chemical factory, you have is, <coughs> the waste generation. So you have water waste generation and you have the air waste generation. So when you are when you are uh, running the air conditioners or when you are drying these products, uh, so there is air which is going to be thrown out also. So that air needs to be controlled. Suppose you are making cancer drugs which are very poisonous and you are throwing that cancer drugs out in the open, then you know all the surrounding people will die. So you need to take care of that. So that is where you know the environmental department comes into the picture. So you have the, you monitor the environmental air which is filtered by a number of HEPA filters or by wet scrubbers. So I think all of you know wet scrubbers, yes, you scrub the air which is going out through water scrubbers, etc. so that, you know, it is clean. So that is one way of doing the air. Now, in a normal standard pharmaceutical factory, you have different, different, uh, yeah, in your house, everyone has a house, yeah. So now basically you have one drainage system going from the bathroom, it goes connects to the municipality. So in this case, we have a separate drainage system which is going from the washrooms, bathrooms, etc., which goes to the municipality or modon. And then you have for the normal, where I make paracetamol, diclofenac, etc., I have another one which I will collect it and then, you know, I will uh, treat it with BOD, COD. I don't know, I hope everyone knows what is BOD. BOD is biological oxygen demand, uh, chemical oxygen demand. We treat it and then we let it go. But in case of toxic, when you are making cancer or something, it's very toxic. If I put everything, everything will die. The bacteria here will die, the bacteria here will die, everything will die. Yeah. So we collect it in normally small containers, maybe 20, 30 or if you limit it to 5, it is nice. So either you treat it, which is very expensive to treat it in house or give it to, you know, you will see many people in the, even in the hospitals, they give it to third party to treat it. So this is what it is. So, so that was the whole point. So we have to take care of the environment. Uh, the air, the water, and uh, so on and so forth. So, okay, so I, we are going fast because you know we don't have the time. If we have time, we will come back to the question and answer. So, Ahmed will take this particular line. Yeah, sir. <coughs> okay, so uh, in terms of the industry now in Saudi Arabia, this could be a question I think is on everyone's mind. So, I try to make it a bit more visual to give you an understanding of where we're at. So, that basically the pharmaceutical industry can be divided into two uh, sectors, the biologic sector and the API sector. Uh, for the uh, API sector, the chemical uh, APIs, we have one API producer in the kingdom. Uh, they, and, but most of the investment that is coming in in Saudi Arabia recently or uh, for the, in the past has been uh, in this uh, region where they produce the drug product. Um, uh, but in terms of the biologics, currently there is no company that is filling this gap. Uh, it is much a different uh, scale, it's a much different uh, industry. Even the people who are trained to operate factories here, they have to be retrained in order to, to go in here. Um, uh, any any biologics into like uh, uh, biosimilars, monoclonal antibodies is up here in this area. Uh, and like I said, currently there is no company that is uh, producing this in, in Saudi. It's uh, ca characterized by high technology transfer costs. Uh, it is a huge investment to make, which is understandable why there isn't a lot of investment. But we've seen some efforts in this regard uh, recently, and hopefully, inshallah, that we will have this uh, growing in the kingdom. Uh, also, we've had some uh, companies that are planning to establish more API factories. Uh, basically, in APIs, it's characterized by uh, large uh, volume production. So th the countries that are dominating are India and China because they are producing at large volume. So economy of scale factors kick in. Uh, for companies here, uh, in addition to the facility in terms of obtaining their GMP, another success factor is their ability to register products and deal with the regulator uh, here in the kingdom. Um, uh, so we'll just give you just a bit of brief about the, the market here in, in Saudi. 
Uh, so the prescription drugs, they represent 88% of the demand. Uh, the international uh, players, they dominate the public sector market. Um, and the domestic players basically mostly focus on manufacturing genetics uh, and also performing secondary packaging or licensing manufacturing for uh, branded uh, uh, products. Uh, they currently, there is no local manufacturer that has uh, registered any patents, obviously, because due to the high R&D costs uh, and uh, it's difficult for small companies of the size to make that investment. Um, uh, we are currently fully dependent on imports of the raw material of the API, although we do have a producer here in the kingdom. Uh, there's a demand, the demand for the pharmaceuticals in 2019 was valued at uh, 32 billion. So the public represents 55% of that, the private sales are 45%. Uh, the overall local manufacturing share has increased, uh, and fortunately, from 2010 to, 20 to 2019, so basically doubled from 15 to 30 percent. And uh, currently, uh, and up until 2020, SFDA has approved at least 26 local manufacturers. So alhamdulillah, يعني, there's progress uh, in this sector. Um, Can you go back? Yep. Okay, we still have, I think, five minutes, so if you can play this, where did it go? Uh, the mic, uh, sure. Yeah, okay, so can we play the video? Like, we have five minutes, so I think we can just play the video and then... This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is basically what, you know, <coughs> what a typical uh, a clean room would look like. You know, so this is the inside of a factory, yeah? So this is basically, uh, so maybe you see this and you'll feel like working in a pharmaceutical factory, yeah? It's such a clean industry. Yeah. So this is the first stage, this is the first stage of manufacturing of a tablet, yeah? So this is, uh, this is, we took it from the YouTube, this GLAT is one of the manufacturers of equipment. And they have laboratories, so this is their laboratory with the, yeah. So here you see they, they are bringing in the API. So, so it's totally automated. So it's basically like the recipe which you do at home, you know, for making. So this, they're loading the recipe. So this is the API. So this is the API. So they are sucking the API into particular, you know. Sorry, no, 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 no. Yeah. And you can see the API is now being fed into this particular thing. So this is basically here, what is happening, they are now making these granules, which you see, something similar to these granules. It's not exactly these granules, but something similar they are trying to make it. So it's known as granulation. So they make that in this particular thing. <coughs> now they want to check whether, you know, what is the condition. So they are taking a sample out here. So they take a sample. They have not touched the product, but the sample is out. So it's, it's still, in, no one has touched the product. So the idea was to show you uh, just a glimpse of what is happening, how the clean room looks. This is a clean room, yeah. <coughs> and basically like, okay, uh, how the equipment are, so if you see all these equipment are placed in a small room because the bigger the room, the more expensive it is. And, uh, and nothing is dirtier. So the equipment are stainless steel 316L as we call it. Okay, so now what has happened is that uh, uh, that is done, the, the drying also was done, it was dried and then you know, uh, they are taking it into a blender and then you have, like we saw the excipients, so that was the API which was being granulated, dried and they feed the ex uh, excipients into this and now the excipients and uh, API are separate, so the, you need to mix it together, yeah, so this is how they mix it together, yeah, so they are mixing it together, it's known as blending, so they blend the whole, uh, those two excipients together. And uh, yeah, so ultimately, and then this goes out here, yeah. Yeah, so 
so that's the blender itself so nowhere along the line except uh, when they are feeding the material has been exposed so it is all closed container uh, transfer and everything is closed here so it's basically and then this is a tableting machine so that blending bin goes up onto the tablet and then the powder so no one is touching the product uh, as such yeah i think you can if you have time we can do the second video right i think that's done so this is basically done so we can go to the next the next video yeah okay so yeah let, let it be yeah khalas yeah yeah so i think it's 1 o'clock you all need to leave or yeah okay yeah so everyone of you has seen the tablets yeah so this is basically the tablet yeah so this is this is how it is made so you have a turret this is known as the turret which is going round and round and then you have those die and a punch so this is moving and then you know so you see the powder is here this is the powder and then you know it the powder fills that hole and then it is punched like this and you see the whole it is compressed into a small tablet the force is huge so basically then you do it into a tablet and then that's how it is fit and then uh, it's basically you get the the whole uh, tablet so this is a small motion so it is basically you can skip to the next one if you want or we can just close it so we have different different uh, uh, things so this is basically a compression and pre it's more technical but we can go to the next one yeah the next one? yeah this one yeah, yeah. yeah so what happens when the tablet is done you have in front of you different colored tablets right yeah so you have different colored tablets so these are the basically uh uh no this one no before yeah this one this i think this can be done right yeah yeah so this is another like so you can have uh, uh tablets which is you know blue green blue whatever so whatever color you want you can uh, do with this particular tablet so so i think everyone has our class now so i think we won't uh, we'll stop at this or yeah if i use we stop at that i think it's 1 o'clock so people need to leave yeah okay so i think we stop at that thank you so much for coming and we hope to like even if you need anything else or something let us know yeah and uh, yeah any questions or something means there's yeah please not this particular one we wouldn't put it here if he died from this particular <laughs> but he this is an example of a patch so the fent